what we're going to do today is we're going to go over the recirculation system on these outboards on the uh, 90s model and stuff what I have here and I'm going to show you how it works what it does keep watching this is kind of a, a crude drawing but here's what happens is when the when the fuel's coming in here, you know, and it goes into the crankcase, what happens is, is a lot of this fuel gets stuck on the crank and stuff here, and, and it drips down, and it gets in the, uh, down in this crank bearing and everything, and it puddles down here. So what they've done is they've actually drilled a hole, it kind of right in there like that, and drilled one in the top bearing, and they've either some models they run a hose right around like that and some models on the smaller uh, models like I showed you has a uh, passageway that just kind of goes in and back up and back over right in through the block there is no external hoses so that would your, be your internal recirculation system and when they do that they put a check valve right here or in the line and the pressure difference the, what happens is, is when it, it creates a low pressure, it starts drawing this out of there. As the low pressure, say every time this gets onto a vacuum, it keeps pumping this up through until it gets to the top, and then it starts falling back down through. Either it's consumed with the rest of the gas, any of it that's not consumed, it drips right back down here, and it gets the same process and goes around again. And that's what the recirculation system is on your outboard motors. This is what we discussed from on the board. Right here is that uh, hose that has got the check in it. When the fuel oil mixture puddles down around the main uh, crankcase bearing in the bottom, it's got that little check valve in there and it comes back up this hose and you can see and it goes all the way back up to the top right up there and all the way back up to the main bearing in the top of the uh, crankcase. And what this does on this here, this is on the low side pressure of it, and it'll just push that back through there. And then it has that reed valve in there to, uh, from going back the other way. And you can see here, this is the one from the manifold. It comes around, it tees into here, it just pushes it into the top part of the carburetor. And this is the same, I have a manual primer. So when I give it a shot of gas, it just draws it in there. And so when this gets a low pressure, it just draws any excess fuel and oil from here and here also. So it's all tied together. And the gas line ties in right, th right there to uh, when you're pumping the primer bulb. So it actually just pumps and sprays it up there. It can't really go this way because that reed valve's blocking it. And then as soon as it starts... This is all under low pressure, so it draws it in right there, to, and it goes in through the carburetor right there at the top. This has got the crankcase recirculation. This is uh, done through the power head passages in the cylinder block. They're not using the external hoses. Same principle. See, when you first start these motors, it doesn't matter which one we're referring to. Until they get warmed up to operating temperature, a lot of gas puddles, gas and fuel mixture puddles down around those bearings and and down in the bottom of the crankcase and if your recirculation system isn't working properly that can make that bottom cylinder run rich causing your spark plugs to foul out and it doesn't matter which engine we're talking about here and I'll show you as the engines get bigger the recirculation systems get a lot more complicated I hope this helped if it helped you any at all give me a thumbs up let other people know that it's worth watching I tried to explain recirculation system without getting too boring I mean it's it's a little more involved the the bigger the bigger the motor the more it's got um, this particular one here I changed all the check valves in the uh, in the manifold and uh, I'm going to show you what they look like here but here's the uh, check valves that I replaced in the oven root uh, 225 let me show you what they look like here They're not very big, so you can see that uh, 
They just went right behind the intake manifold right here on the reed block. So right in there. So it's, uh, and the way I tested these to see if they were bad is what I did is I took a syringe and a piece of hose and hooked it onto the uh, hose connection on the outside. If I could push it and the fluid would go both ways, I knew the check was stuck in the open position. Half of them were good, half of them were bad. When I replaced them, I took them all out. I did not pay attention to which ones were good and which ones were bad here, but I wouldn't put a used one back in any house. Anyhow, you can see they're not very big. I mean, there it is compared to a penny. So you can see they're pretty small. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and always keep watching. Stay safe on the water.